sometimes it looks like lesion and it is, and we call it that. And sometimes, you know, you have to be a little, you know, so maybe like for this one, you want, you might want to do something more, more like this and, and kind of, and you know, if you hadn't seen this, you might extend it down through here. But since you see this over there, you know, you, you are, you should be thinking, oh, well, that is very likely periventricular capping. And what did I actually do with this? Um, let me show you. Well, apparently I did extend that down. So um, let me see if there's anywhere where I decided that it was capping. Uh, no, not so much in this one. So Branch would probably disagree, maybe. So these are, yeah, so you're, you're going to cut. So these are these cases where, like, you know, I'll say it's lesion and Branch doesn't or vice versa. And you're like, but there's no, right. And he's, his is the right answer. <laughs> he says, whatever you did is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Does that try to think that the white matter between two very two symmetrically? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Cooner infarct. This is a weird one. Um, a little bit as well. So this is kind of like this uh, periventricular white matter disease um, where it's very, very frequent in older folks. See how this kind of looks like Swiss cheese up here? See all these little black holes there? That's totally like common in, in older folks. Um, I can't give you a percentage, but it's very common. And again, it's one of these things does it have an impact? Yeah, probably, but do we know what it is? No. Um, so, and it, you, obviously you would go insane if you had to fill in all these little bubbles here. So, so we ignore them. Uh, that's the easiest thing to do. Because um, we don't really know what they do. We don't, we don't know if, if it's a problem or not, and we kind of, you know, just hope that it washes out. Um, <laughs> Brian says he doesn't actually want to get any scans just in case he finds all these little holes in there. <laughs> um, Atrophy also, by the way, happens with old age. Um, okay, so we talked about lacunar infarct. Um, like I said, so these are common. Um, a, a lot of times you'll, you'll find them in the in the basal ganglia like this. Kind of uh, um, there, kind of looks a little ratty. That's that's fairly common. Um, you know, and, and again, the important thing to do is to check whether this is on more than one slice. You know, it should be on like three, minimum three slices before you start to draw it. So, you can't do the, uh, you can't do the uh, absorbed hemisphere comparison here because it, you don't really expect it to be symmetric. Right? The uh, lacunar stuff? Yeah, right. I mean, and, and we don't, we just sort of ignore it. Um, it's, a, it's a weird thing. It happens. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. So, well, so yeah. Right. So for the uh, for the basal ganglia, actually, that is very helpful because a lot of times, you know, you'll get a lesion here in the sylvian fissure, and it kind of comes up to you know putamen here, and then it gets ratty. But if you look over here, and the other one's also ratty, then you don't want to extend in. So in that sense, yeah, you do want to do that sort of interhemispheric comparison. Um, okay. And last one on my list here. It's actually kind of crazy. Um, is Scanner, um, where is it? Artifacts, do I not have, oh. Metal artifact, oh, and metal artifact too. All right, so, so you'll be going along looking at your brain, and you're like, okay, everything looks good, where's the lesion? Oh, okay, I see some lesion. And then suddenly somebody drops a, a stone in your image and you get ripples. Um, that's not lesion. Um, this person had some bit of metal in them or, or something that was reacting with the magnetic field that causes a disturbance. And then when you send the wave through the magnetic field, it, you know, gets this kind of, uh, kind of a neat pattern. Um, but if, if it, so here it's actually, it's, it's eh, not, it's a little annoying because you're drawing, you know, way over here. Um, you know, you got your distortion back here and you're drawn over here. Not too big of a deal. So there are other cases. Um, ah, wrong one. 
So you, when you get like a big lesion here, and then suddenly the artifact washes over it, and you are trying to determine the lesion boundary, oh, you know, here-ish, <laughs> gets tough. Um, this is not a frequent thing. We try to screen people out of this, and there are sometimes ways to correct this out. Um, other times it's not so easy to correct this out. Um, but it's just something that can happen. You don't want to, you know, run away screaming. Generally, you know, you should go back to the person and ask, you know, ask if there's a technician that can correct it. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. Um, and if there isn't, like in this case, you know, you kind of just do your best. Uh, again, you can kind of use a, a interhemispheric comparison here and kind of guess where this distortion is and, and whether that's, you know, really healthy tissue or not. It can be tough to say. Um, but those those are kind of the the things that that you should be aware of. As are being yeah. As soon as the scan is done, you see that distortion, and we try and make corrections. If I remember the two cases that we're actually looking at right here, it was due to extensive dental work, which we tried to eliminate as much of the artifact as possible, but. So right in the right at the time of the scan, I mean, is that as soon as the scan is done, so it's, it's an eight minute scan. As soon as the eight minutes are up, we see the distortion. Okay, that's that that's when we try and make any corrections. Okay. Is, is there a point like drawing um, the 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 lesion ROI for this case registration will fail anyway? Actually, the registration. Yeah, so we kind of we did that as an experiment, and it turned out to it worked pretty well. Surprisingly. Yeah, and so. A lot of that has to do with, as we'll talk about uh, next section, going through the intermediate template. I think salt resolves a lot of that distortion. And the other thing is that even after you've done all the warps, branch goes, you, you have somebody go back and check them to make sure that it didn't warp it out of the skull or something like that. So that also catches that. So that that actually covers everything on my list. We're, we're almost out of time. If there are any questions or... Uh, right, so we're, uh, we're going to make some homework available. Um, the homework is going to consist of um, lesion, uh, I'm sorry, scans that will you know, look you know, just like this, so you'll get it, and you'll, uh, let's see, it'll probably open up in, in the multiple view. So you'll get some, you know, a scan that looks like this, and your job is to just, you know, produce the, the lesion map. Um, and so we will send out, or we're going to make available to download from the VLSM tutorial we'll site. So, Friday? Okay. Um, so we have the sets all picked out. It's just an, an issue of getting them up on the web. Um, they're they're kind of large files is, is the issue. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, still under discussion of, as far as... So right now, they're in header and image. Yeah. So we'll put those up. There's going to be a set of easy ones, a set of hard ones, and also the, the actual region that I drew. So you guys can kind of draw, and, or, or, or you know, the, the best practice that you will get out of it is actually sitting down and drawing every slice. It's going to take a lot of time, and you, you might go insane, but uh, that's, that'll be the best way, the, the most you can get out of uh, the training stuff. Um, alternatively, if you're just kind of curious and want to test yourself, you know, you can kind of say, oh, I think I'd draw it this way, and then just look and see if, if I did it the same way. I would suggest actually drawing it and getting the practice, but, you know, not everybody has that time. So, um, any other questions? Yeah. Are there any additional issues with Uh, no, no, not really. Um, are you thinking like because of fMRI has issues with like sinus signal? No. So, so um, with the structural, you know, uh, you can get down to the sinuses here. You know, you, you don't really lose any sort of resolution in your picture. And so and you're just making a determination, you know, is this lesion or is this not? So, um, so there, I, I don't think there's any signal loss or anything associated with like anterior temporal stuff for sinuses. Yeah. It seems that like the lesion distribution that might be easier to trace in the frontal slices. Is there a particular reason that you guys do axial? 
just because Branch said so. Um, probably. Uh, well, so well, so like I said, uh, you know, I actually go through in the coronal first. I do a first pass in coronal, trace it in axial, do another pass in coronal to make sure I didn't go out of the boundaries, and then a final pass in axial. So um, we flip back and forth. I don't know if that sort of answers your question. Yeah. I don't. There's fewer slices, yeah, right? In general, to answer your question, I think it's because the protocol that we're using has an in-plane acquisition of axial. So you just get a little bit more sharpness in the pictures that are axial than in the sort of other kind of slice. And so, as you're talking about, when you're making that judgment as far as adjusting the contrast and things like that, you see just a little bit more there to get the function of So then in the next session, will we have an opportunity to be like, okay, I tried drawing this, and I saw that Grant did it this way, and I did it this way. Why not do it? Yeah, I think we were going to set some time um, for next session for, for to <coughs> homework review. If you have any questions, maybe set aside like 20 minutes. Um, you know, if people don't have questions, then we can just move on. But, uh, you know, we can, you know we'll, we can put them up and, and uh, kind of look at them, and I can tell you why I did something, or mm -hmm. I can try. <laughs> Um, and, and I guess, do you guys want to give like a little preview of what we're talking about next time, or talking about warping? No? Okay. Surprise. To be continued. Surprise, yeah. It's... Right. Right, so the temp... In France, I mean, there are yeah. There's plenty of people. There's plenty of people who do that. But uh, as far as your question, you use landmarks. That's when landmarks become really important to tell if you're on the same slice. You know, it averages somewhere between like maybe two and three native slices per per. Uh, Template slice, the template slices are thicker. Um, but you have it's not it's not a consistent thing, you know. Everybody and and you know people's brains will differ as far as, you know how smush they are in certain parts, and so so that's when the landmarks really become critical. Pretty much like every slice, you want to check to make sure that you're aligned. <laughs>